Hey guys, this is AC Service Tech, and today what I wanted to go over is how do you check a refrigerant charge in subcoin when there's no rating plate? So say the rating plate is completely sun bleached, it's just gone, okay? How do you tell, number one, what refrigerant's in the system, and then what subcoin do you set it at for efficiency and, and to have it work correctly? The subcoin charging process is used for every comfort cooling system that has a thermostatic expansion valve as a metering device at the evaporator coil. So that is the indoor coil. All right, so um, I just want to let you know that if you can't find it on the rating plate, some bleach, then look at the compressor. On the compressor, there may be a sticker on there. Most of the time, there is that'll tell you what refrigerants in the system. As well, uh, if you have an R4 to nice system, which is the pink, uh, light pink, uh, you might have a Puron or Suva sticker or R4 to nice sticker somewhere else on that outdoor unit. So that's a couple ways to tell. Um, another way is just say that it is 70 degrees outside and if you attach your your high side gauge to your high side line and you attach your low side gauge to your low side line and say you read 70 degrees okay at 200 psig that would mean that you have r 4 a refrigerant okay if the system is not running it's 70 degrees outside and your pressure lines up with that temperature of 70 degrees, then you know it's r 4 a refrigerant because uh, the outside ring on your gauge set is pressure, and then your inner rings, such as the green ring right here, that's R22, and your pink ring right here, that's r 4 a All right, so if it was 70 degrees out, and you were only reading, say, maybe about 120, about 122 or so, then that will mean that you have R22 free on, okay? Uh, but it wouldn't be R4 tonight because at that pressure, it's saying that it's 40 degrees outside. The saturated temperature in a ring means that the refrigerant is at liquid and vapor state, okay? They're, they're mixed together. That's what saturated means. So when the system's off, it's like a giant um, refrigerant bottle. So that's how you tell what refrigerant's in the system. Now, on the subcooling. So... On the rating plates, uh, most of the time you're going to see maybe 8 degrees to 12 degrees on the rating plate, but I've seen as high as 17 degrees of target subcoiling on the rating plate. And what subcoiling is, is the temperature decrease in liquid form from the middle of the outdoor coil until you come out at the liquid line. All right, so it's right after the refrigerant turns out of the saturated state and turns into a complete liquid. It makes multiple passes through the outdoor coil and it comes out over here on the liquid line. It's the temperature decrease in liquid form from here to here. This gauge is telling you what is happening right at this part of the coil. All right, so in this case, let's just use R4 to 9 as an example. And at 270 PSIG, if you follow that in, you see that we are at 88 degrees R4 to 9 temperature. Now on this line right here, if you had, say, uh, maybe 82 degrees here, then 88 minus 82 only leaves you with 6 degrees of subcooling. All right, and in most cases, that is going to be too low. That means that you only have a small amount of liquid refrigerant uh, in the coil here as it's running. Okay, so it cannot drop in temperature until it comes out over here. It doesn't have enough passes over here. Okay, so that's subcooling. Now, if most rating plates say 8 to 12, but you do see some that are, say, 14, 15, 17 degrees of target subcooling from the manufacturer, then 11 or maybe even 12 degrees as your target subcooling will be your best bet. All right, you don't ever see a target subcooling of 6 or 5 or anything like that. So if you get in the medium, basically at 11 degrees of subcooling, and you're three degrees away from typically your lowest uh, subcooling rating, usually found on these outdoor uh, comfort cooling systems. As well, you are three degrees away from 14 degree target subcooling, which is usually on the higher side. But once again, I have seen them at 15 and 17 degrees. So once you check uh, your subcooling and it is maybe at 11, you want to go ahead inside the building and make sure you have an 18 to 21 degree temperature difference across the indoor coil. That would be a confirmation that you do have the correct refrigerant charge in the outdoor unit. 
All right, that would happen as long as there's not too high a humidity. You should be able to get 18 to 21 degree temperature difference between the return air and the supply air. So let's just give you the example right here. If you are at 88 degrees saturated state at this coil, which is actually right where the liquid uh, starts after the phase change from saturated state to liquid, you have 88 degrees there and you have 82 degrees here. Well, then that leaves you with a subcoin of only 6 degrees of subcoin which that's too low, okay? So what we would do is we would have to add liquid refrigerant out of the bottle, and then we'd have to meter it in slowly into the vapor line, which would then increase the pressure, okay, while we're running, while the system's running, and say we now have a operating pressure of 280 PSIG. If you bring that into 90 degrees saturated state in the middle of the outdoor coil, then 90 degrees is where the liquid starts at and then it, it drops in temperature until it comes out here. What will happen is this pressure and this saturated temperature will go up and this actual temperature will go down. So say that this is now 79 degrees and this is 90 degrees. You take 90 minus the lower temperature which is the actual temperature and which is 79 degrees and you have 11 degrees of subcooling. Alright, so that is what you would want to set this at if the system does not have a reading plate, or at least that's that's what I find works, okay? Uh, you're gonna wanna go ahead and confirm that at the indoor uh, coil, basically. You're gonna take a temperature reading between the return air and the supply air, and make sure that you have 18 to 21 degree temperature difference between the return and supply air that is inside the house. That would confirm that your refrigerant charge at your outdoor unit is correct. Hope you enjoyed yourself, and we'll see you next time at the AC Service Tech channel.